We both have herpes. So this is one of our videos in part of our sexual health week video week. Content, content week. week. <laughs> it's sexual health week coming up, so we thought we'd start it off with a bang um, and yeah. tell you all about herpes because it's it's just there's not enough information out there. It's all it's stigmatized. It's not funny, but you, everyone laughs at it. <laughs> You're like, it's not funny, but everyone's like, <laughs> you have herpes. <laughs> so in this video, we're going to be talking about our herpes origin story, uh, where we got it from, and a little bit about our symptoms. How very common it is. The two different types of herpes and the differences. Treatment, what can I do? recurrences, how often you get it or how little you get it, how it can be caught or passed on, <laughs> what everyone wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> can it be caught again? Herpes and myths, the stigma around herpes and why. So I don't think anyone really knows how common herpes is. And we talk about how common it is, but these are some actual facts and statistics by an amazing website we found. We found all our facts today on the Herpes Virus Association website. Mm. Which was actually recommended to us by a really good friend and sex therapist, the sex doctor. Her name's Karen. She's lovely. In the UK, seven out of 10 people have caught herpes by the time they are 25. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. That's a lot of people. Only one in three people have symptoms, so most people don't know that they've even caught anything. Herpes is a relatively harmless virus that doesn't affect any future health or fertility. So herpes is in the same family as glandular fever and chickenpox, which we've pr probably all had. Yeah. And it stays in your body just like herpes does. Because herpes stays in the body, this is why it's called incurable. But if you get symptoms again, it's actually cleared or cured again by the body. There are two different types of herpes. Type one is most commonly oral herpes. And type two is most commonly genital. But you can actually get type one on your genitals or type two on your face. Which has never been clear before. No one tells you this stuff. The only practical difference between both of them is that type one may reoccur more on your face and type two may reoccur more on your genitals. So that means if you have type two on your face, you might be less likely to get more reoccurring symptoms and vice versa. So the symptoms of herpes can start anywhere between two days and two weeks after you catch the infection. Most people have mild symptoms when they catch herpes, so you might not even know that you've caught anything at all. And some people might not get any symptoms at all. You might feel a tingling or itchy sensation in the area affected. You can often have flu-like symptoms. The area can get swollen and very sensitive. You might experience pain in the area around the infected area. Small blisters or ulcers might appear. Sometimes there's just one, sometimes there are more. When the blisters do eventually burst, they can leave red, painful, sore areas. But they all heal within three to 10 days. So if you do have any of these symptoms, of course, go to your sexual health clinic or doctor. You can't actually be tested though if you don't have any symptoms. I literally went to the sexual health clinic and said, test me, I think I have herpes. And they couldn't because I had no blisters or no sores or anything. So when you go to the sexual health clinic or doctors, they'll put you on an antiviral medicine. There are creams that you can buy over the counter or get from your doctor. Also, painkillers can be really useful, especially for inflammation. Oh, yeah. You can get anaesthetic sprays to relieve the pain. Make sure you keep the area clean. A salt water solution can also help. Avoid using scented soaps. Avoid going near the area or touching it, but if you have to touch, please wash your hands first. Keeping the area cool can help, but don't put ice directly on the skin. If you find peeing painful, then you can piss in the shower or in the bath. Apparently that helps. Yeah, running water over the urination can make it less painful. Yeah. If urinating is really, really painful, you can use numbing creams. 
Leave the area alone. The skin will heal. Symptoms will heal with or without treatment. About half the people with herpes get symptoms only once or twice. And then the other half get outbreaks more often. The symptoms usually get milder and less frequent with time. And sometimes can stop altogether. Often or not, the first time you catch herpes, no matter where it is, will be the worst. Worst symptoms, worst breakout, worst feeling. Yeah. It does get better. Symptoms can be brought on by stress, menstruation, tiredness, tiredness too much alcohol. Basically when the immune system is down. Which can be a lot for some people. Most people find that their body controls the infection without medicine. Or that changes in their lifestyle can change their immune response. You can get antiviral medicines to treat reoccurring symptoms, so definitely go to your doctors. Some people take a daily antiviral tablet to prevent outbreaks. How it's caught. <laughs> the most juicy bit of herpes. <laughs> the most exciting bit. You can only get it through skin on skin contact. Transmission is very likely if there are lumps, bumps or sores. Mm -hmm. It's not very likely to pass when there are no symptoms. It's not caught off towels, cups, toilet seats, objects, Sw swimming pools, blood, baths. Yeah, the cells die. Yeah. The easiest place to get herpes is of course the skin on your lips and the skin around your genitals, really thin sensitive areas. But you can get it anywhere else on your body too. If you have like a cut or broken skin. When normal skin is damaged like eczema or sunburn or maybe just a cut, the virus can get in. So don't have sex. <laughs> <laughs> when you have symptoms, of course. Avoid skin on skin contact. The transmission risk is very low outside of these times. Condoms will help if it's covering the affected area, but if it can't cover the affected area, then it's not worth the risk. I feel like one of the biggest questions about herpes is, can you pass it on when you don't have any symptoms? Yeah. Yes, the virus can still be present when there are no visible symptoms. Many people will be aware of an itch or a tingling sensation in the affected area at these times. It's something called viral shedding. People with fewer outbreaks hardly shed any virus whatsoever, but still be careful when it comes to sex. So basically you can get it when there are no symptoms, but it is still very unlikely. Can I catch herpes again or can a partner be reinfected? Most people only catch one herpes type once. If two people in a relationship have two different types of herpes, they can pass it to each other, but often the symptoms are a lot less. If they both have the same type, there is a very small chance that they will pass the virus onto another area that hasn't been infected. If this happens, symptoms are so mild that it's barely noticeable at all. There are a lot of myths around herpes. Outbreaks of herpes does not affect the baby in the womb when you're pregnant. It is so rare for herpes to affect the baby during birth and it is often over-exaggerated. On the internet. Yeah. And I just want to read this quote. Management of genital herpes in pregnancies from the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynaecology, the British Health Association and the British Association of Sexual Health and HIV states mm. that women with genital herpes should expect a normal delivery even if they have an outbreak at term. Only women who have their first episode after the 28th week will be advised to have a C-section. But of course, your doctor and health professionals will talk to you about this if you have herpes yes. when pregnant. <laughs> there is so much fucking stigma when it comes to herpes. Yeah, massive amounts. I don't think there's ever any person that's gone, hey, I got herpes, how cool. Best shag ever. Hey yeah. everyone, I have herpes. This is the reason why it's taken so long for us to do this video in the first place, because of the stigma yeah. surrounding herpes. I have had herpes for a number of years now and We've had this channel for four years and this is the first time I am talking openly about having herpes because of this fucking stigma. I was too afraid to come out as having herpes because it feels like I have to come out yeah. <laughs> with herpes because the stigma is so bad. Like so many films and TV, there'll be jokes about people with herpes and it's just, I don't know, we're just shamed for it. It's just like, but why? when? almost everyone has it. I think there's a huge communication error and lack mm -hmm. of understanding with the information because there's a lot of information out there and it is so 
complicated yeah. and confusing. Like even us making this video now, we had to break down a hell of a lot of it for us to understand, to give to you guys. Yeah, and still with the information that we got, there's a lot of you might be able to, it's less likely if. So it's yeah. like, there's never like, there's no clean cut information about mm -hmm. it. It's very, there. very gray area. Very gray area. I mean, I was lucky with when I got my herpes because I was so young, I had no idea of the complications that her herpes was or the issues that people had it. I just remember telling my teacher when I was like, eight or nine years old and him backing away and being like, Ugh! Yeah. but I don't know why he did that. I had a really hard time with telling people about herpes and most of the time I didn't. Yeah. But when we were gonna make this video, I reached out to our good friend, the sex doctor, Karen. She's a sex therapist and she talks to people about the stigma and the shame that they feel around herpes. I just wanted to read out what she sent to me because it made me feel a lot better in myself for not having told people. Yes, it is great to tell people, but the reality is until the stigma reduces, it is not unusual for people not to. My opinion is that having sex always includes a risk of STI. True. So rather than putting the emphasis on the person with HSV to disclose it, it should be a possibility in everyone's mind when having sex with someone, especially given STIs that are so common. However, there has been a case of pro prosecution in the UK for not disclosing HSV and HSV was transmitted, which was quite frankly ridiculous and horrifying, but it has happened so there is precedent. So it can be useful to avoid the strict you don't need to tell message whilst at the same time acknowledging that there are many social reasons people feel unable to, which sucks. Because mm. this is, it's herpes, it's not life threatening. Mm -hmm. Because of the stigma, I've, I always felt like if I told people, they weren't going to want to have sex with me. Yeah. And I think like, I think maybe if I was in the other person's shoes, if someone told me if they had herpes and I didn't know how you, if that I might not get it, then I think I would be less likely to want to have sex with them. Especially if you're just like single and fucking around exactly. and having fun. You don't really want to waste, Not it's not wasting your time, but like yeah. risk that or again, wasting your time enjoying somebody's company. It, yeah. There's a lot of weird stigma going around. Also, I, I would have had no idea that it was so common either. I would have been just like avoiding that. Like, I don't want to get that. Like, mm. I didn't like not knowing that most people have it. It's this idea of it being incurable as well mm. that, that fucks with your mind. You genuinely think you're going to have sores on your body for the rest of your life. Yeah. And that is just totally not yeah. what happens. But like, we all have chicken pox and when we get chicken pox, no one's like, oh my God, you've got chicken pox in your side, like inside you forever and if, it might come out again. Yeah, if anything, parents put you together with the yeah. child with chicken pox to get it over and done with. They should do this with herpes. <laughs> oh my God. Do you this imagine? Is the, this is the solution to this end of all herpes stigma. No, little Billy, rub your genitals all over that little girl so she's got herpes so it's okay. <laughs> so what is your herpes story, Reed? Well, mine's not that exciting, but it's quite funny. <laughs> I got herpes when I was about eight or nine years old um, from my grandmother who had cold sores on her face, I assume type one, and I got them in three scratch lines down my neck at the age of like, yeah, eight, nine. But oh. It's not flared up for over 10 years now. Um, I mean, what, that was 20 years ago I, I got it, effectively. Yeah. And I think it flared up maybe, let's say five times. And of course, yeah, I felt ill, I was run down. Well, I was really young, so I didn't really understand it. I just remember the shock on my parents' faces and my teachers and things, but it wasn't, you know, I, I just put a plaster on it when I went to school and didn't really talk about it that much, but yeah. it was never really a big issue. It's, it's quite... interesting because no one thinks that you can get it in other places that aren't like your face or yeah. your genitals, but you can. Absolutely, like, m m a lot of my family mm. suffer from it. Even my uncle has herpes and, and cold sores up his arm, which you'd never even think of. But having said that, it's not likely to get it anywhere else. No. Your skin has to be broken and it has to come in contact with an affected 
piece of skin. Yeah, I mean, my grandmother must have had a, a very infectious sore on in her face and maybe she was giving me a kiss or it was on her hands or mm -hmm. something. I mean, I can't imagine she was kissing my neck, but... You can get it on your fingers. Yeah, get it, get, definitely pass it along with your fingers. Yeah. Also, if you saw someone that had like a couple of sores on their neck, but you're not gonna be like, ew. No. Like, it's just not like that. So many people have cold sores and they're just like, yeah, I get cold sores, I get ulcers. And no one's like, Oh my god, I have herpes, yeah, just a little herpes outbreak. Yeah! Everyone's just like, no, it's just a cold sore. It's, it's just like, a cold that's, sore. I mean, that is, is herpes. herpes. That's herpes. Yeah, Philly. What about you? So, I got herpes when I was really run down and a one night stand. Oh, the worst! Basically, a guy went down on me and I got type 1 from his mouth onto my genitals from him going down on me. So fucking annoying. The most annoying thing about that story is that um, he was, he really wanted to have sex with me and he, I was like, no, I've got to use a condom. He's like, I don't have a condom. Ugh. Can we do it anyway? And I sort of gave in. Oh, and, But the weird thing is, is that I didn't get herpes from fucking without a condom. I got it from him going down on me beforehand. Mm. <laughs> but I was so run down when this happened. Really and poorly. it definitely is, it's definitely way easier to get herpes herpes when you are run down yourself because your immune system's down if your immune system isn't up for fighting against things then you'll be more likely to get it your body just can't fight off the infection as well yeah and also mm. the person that gave it to me had no idea they had it really yeah no oh. absolutely no idea so they were just as shocked when i told them that they'd given me the, the herpes and he was like what no yeah and then he went to get himself tested and obviously he didn't have any symptoms so they couldn't tell him that he had it. So I think still probably to this day, he's like, ah, I don't have it. Oh my God, that's actually awful. <laughs> but it's like, I know for one, like 100% it was him that gave it to me. Cause I got, <sighs> I got the massive like fluey, painful sores mm. like two days, two to three days after sleeping with him. And I hadn't been sexually active with any, anyone else. Fucking hell, that's so frustrating. Yeah. I mean, my partner and I, when we went to a sex party, we convinced ourselves that we had herpes around the mouth and ended up going to the sexual health clinic and they were like, no, we can't test you, there's nothing there. And yeah. <laughs> we felt quite embarrassed because they are like, it looks like dry skin, just go home and rehydrate. Yeah. But yeah, at least like that's cleared up a lot. I, I now know that I can get it again, but it, that, yeah. the risk is very low. And also I, I did get like a few outbreaks when I first got it. Mm. Maybe within like the first year I had uh, maybe like four or five outbreaks in the first year and then it got less and less every single year. And I haven't had an outbreak for maybe two years now. Yeah. So I'm, and I'm hoping that I won't ever get one again. Mm. But even even after the first, the first one was really painful and the oh. sores, I couldn't walk, I couldn't sit down. It was like, it was painful. Yeah. But after that, yeah, they, they, just, they just weren't as bad at mm. all. I remember also part of the stigma that I felt, I thought that I couldn't share like straws with anyone. Yeah. I was like, I have genital herpes, but can I pass it on with my own saliva? I was just so confused about it all. Yeah. But obviously mean, not. Like people could share my drinks, my straws, and like they wouldn't have got herpes. Because yeah, the herpes virus dies. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember my mum sitting me down having a chat and being like, when you have a flare up, you're not allowed to touch yourself down there. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, of course I can do that i just have to make sure i've washed my hands or i'm using a toy or i'm not yeah you know i mean with down. the information that we sort of found today it's it up i a think lot. it said that you could potentially pass it yeah you could but like that's very unlikely i guess i guess they, they don't just, say they can't, can't say 100 percent I think that's the whole mm. thing with herpes and the stigma is that nothing is 100%. Like a doctor saying it's very unlikely mm. means that it's very unlikely. I know that what's really helpful for cold sores is just keeping it covered. Like you get those, I don't want to brand drop, but compede patches. Yeah. They're these tiny little plastic patches and apparently if you put them over, it stops the blistering from happening. It just all happens underneath the patch. Mm -hmm. They can be really helpful. I mean, if I have a flare up, I cover mine with the plaster, but these are areas that can be covered up. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's, it's so much harder when they're elsewhere. Yeah, you just don't have any sexual contact really. If you've ever got a flare up, just avoid it. Like you don't want to pass it on 
to anyone. Mm. So it's also, it's your body, you know, you can choose who to tell and when to tell. Yeah. Of course, being as honest as you possibly can is the best way forward and we can't stress that enough, but no one can tell you to tell everyone. Yeah. You know, that would be wrong of us to say. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's good to tell people if you feel comfortable doing that, but mm -hmm. you can't, like, don't feel bad if you can't actually physically tell people yeah. because I mean that's what happened to me and I ended up deciding that I wasn't going to tell people because I didn't see it as a big deal like it's it basically what Karen the sex doctor said it was like it like anyone having sex opens themselves up to a risk of getting an STI mm -hmm. so it's not really on me to like let them know that when it's very unlikely that they will will get it yeah just don't be stupid when it comes to protection yeah. be protected and then when you are in like a long-term relationship i think it is worth then having the conversation once you know it's serious that you do have it mm -hmm. just so they know a little bit more information about you and, and if they're with you and they're like and they support and love you then they're gonna support you yeah, no matter what. The best way to go about it is if you get told someone's got herpes, don't be disgusted, mm -hmm. don't be angry, just treat it as like, oh shit, thanks for telling me, maybe yeah. make it into a bit of a joke. It doesn't yeah. have to be serious all the time. It can be literally like, you can take the piss out of it. Laughter is a great yeah. medicine when you're laughing at yourself and others are laughing with you, not yeah. at you. Obviously, we wanted to share our stories to help break this stigma. Mm -hmm. And it's taken me a long time to do this, but it's the right thing to do. How do you we feel? Need, How do you feel? Start, <laughs> we need to start talking about it. I feel good about sharing mm -hmm. it. And I feel like, I think it, I felt a little bit like a heavy guilt, shame by not even talking about it mm. when we've got this platform. It's just such a minor thing, guys. It's so minor. It doesn't affect my life in any way whatsoever. Most of you have it. Most, you probably, you watching this who thinks that they don't have herpes probably has herpes. <laughs> and like, it's not a big deal. And it's not, it's not scary. No, it doesn't have it's to be scary. scary. Of course, when you get poorly, it is a bit scary. Yeah. But that, like, it's it's herpes. So yeah. many of us have it. It's something that we just gotta. You can choose to either wallow over, but sometimes you just gotta pick yourself up and be like, right, I just gotta get on with this. Yeah. And it is okay to feel really down and depressed oh, God, when yeah. you get it. That's something we haven't mentioned actually. Is that like when you find out? Sometimes I felt like it was the end of the world. I was just yeah. like, I'm never gonna have sex again. Mm -hmm. Like, who's gonna want to have sex with me now? I've got herpes. Yeah. because that's what the stigma makes you feel and we talked about a lot of like the practical and physical symptoms but with herpes mental health it plays such a huge part but of course because of course if your mental health is down your immune system's down mm -hmm. and of course if you get a flare-up then your immune then your mental health is going to be affected by that mm -hmm. and it becomes really cyclical and cycle you know if you've got good mental health space then often or not if you get a flare-up you're like this is shit i feel awful but i can deal with it if any of you have herpes and you want any help and advice please please contact us on the comments down below or on our Instagram DMs. We'll talk about it more on Instagram as well. Yes. Guys, thank you so much for watching our video. Have a safe sexual health week. Woohoo! Yeah. Find loads of free condoms and get a fucking... <laughs> and get yourself checked. Oh yeah, and check yourself out. <laughs> Next week we will be doing, or we'll be showing, a video on our self-testing home kits for our STI. So we're gonna do the whole shebang, film it all so you can see what we're up to, and then yeah, show you the results. Woo. Okay, we'll see you next week, guys. Make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and comment. comment. <clears throat> also listen to our podcast, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Fuck's given. Bye. Bye.